everything. Everyone's trickling in. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. Today we have the fabulous Marley Bird with us, ready for another exciting class. And we'll be crocheting a shawl for mom. My name is Patricia from Your Inspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions that you might have during the class. Just pop them in the chat, chat, and we'll be sure that Marley answers them. So welcome, Marley. Hey. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, I'm excited to be back to another Michael's Community Classroom. It's a lot of fun to teach these classes. And I see some familiar faces, which is always lovely because it means that uh, at least you like what I'm giving you. So that's awesome. Hi, LJ. It's nice to see you here, my friend. Um, all right. So <laughs> uh, let's see. Today we are going to jump in and we're going to make a shawl for mom because Mother's Day is coming up. And there's a lot of us that like to put together some quick, quick gifts or even something quick to wear on our own day. You know, you might be a mom and you might want to throw something on. And so this is one of those pieces that once you get started with it, 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 it's a very easy pattern to memorize. And really you can stop the, the growth of the shawl at any point. The edging on the shawl is so easy that it really doesn't matter how many different rows you have completed on the shawl and you could just make it bigger, make it smaller, do whatever you want. Um, this shawl is used, is made using the brand new Karen, what have this is? Karen cotton ripple cakes. I haven't even used this yet, you guys. Like I got this the other day and I was like, oh, this is so so pretty. The colors are just to die for. I love it. The pattern, I'm pretty sure they've put a link in the chat or um, I'm assuming they probably sent it to you when you signed up for the class, but it is available um, at yarnspirations.com. It's called the rainy day crochet shawl. And conveniently enough, it's also the pattern that's on the ball band of this ball of yarn. Um, so today I'm going to use a solid color yarn just to show you how to do these stitches on camera because I feel like you might be able to see them easier. Um, but you can do this with the cotton ripple cakes, which would be great for literally any season of the year and in any um, part of the country. So whether you're in um, super cold Minnesota or super warm Florida, this is a really great shawl pattern. It does utilize, I'm going to jump down here to my hands if that is all right. It does, does utilize what I like to call the granny um, the granny set. I, it's not a cluster, but it's a granny set. And you guys who have been crocheting for a while know what I'm talking about. It's where you put three double crochets into one space or sometimes into one stitch. So we're going to utilize the granny set and then every other row, it's sort of like a fillet. So it's a very easy two row pattern to um, memorize and you will start, if I can come over here, right up here at the very top. So you start at the top here and you let your piece grow. So if I were to turn this upside down, well, you know, upside down for the shawl, we will start right here. And then as we increase our rows, that's how we increase the wingspan of the shawl. And as I said, you can increase as far as you want, as far as the pattern is written, or you know, the, you could go further, you could stop it sooner. And then the, the edging is a very simple single crochet edging. And then you do single crochets and these picots on top of them. So it's, it's a very easy pattern. Okay, guys, so we're going to jump in and just get started on this. Uh, the link to the pattern is in the chat. I can see Patricia put it in there. Thank you, Patricia. Um, I'm going to set that aside. I'm just, as I mentioned, I'm going to grab some just plain worsted weight yarn. Um, I have a size H crochet hook. You can use any size hook you want for this project um, that works with your yarn. And I know people are going to ask. This is a basic Susan Bates crochet hook. I just have a different handle on it because I crochet so much that my hand starts to really cramp up. So I like to have a larger handle. Okay. So it's just a basic crochet hook um, with a handle, <laughs> right? Okay. So if you take a look at the pattern, you'll notice that there are some basic abbreviations. It does give you a gauge. I'm not going to stress too much about gauge because this is just a shawl. It doesn't have to fit, so to speak. Um, it gives you a couple notes that let you know that the chain four at the beginning of the rows count as a treble crochet. And then we're going to make sure that we have some stitch markers and we will move these markers up the center of our shawl to help us identify 
oops, so sorry. Guys, I did put this on do not disturb. I had this conversation right before I went live that I put my phone on do not disturb and then calls still come through for some reason. And we just can't figure out why that happens. So I apologize. All right, so hopefully that won't happen again. You do wanna have stitch markers. We will use those to um, make sure we identify the center stitch as we go, okay? So I went ahead, I've put a slip knot on my hook. I've left a, probably a longer tail than I need, but I left a nice long tail. And we're gonna go ahead and begin with a chain four, okay? Um, I see a question about the cotton ripple cakes. Do you wanna pull those from the outside or the inside? You can, in theory, do either one. With cakes, they are made to be pulled from the inside if you want to, but you could pull it from the outside or the inside. It really doesn't matter too much. So one, two, three, four, I've done four chains. Can you all see that, that color well enough? I tried to pick a, a neutral color so that way you guys could easily see. Um, we'll get going and let's see how this goes, all right? So we've chained four, it says join with the slip stitch to the first chain to form a ring. So I'm gonna come over here to the very first chain, insert my hook, turn over, pull up a loop and then pull that loop through the loop on my hook. So I have a very simple chain. This, this um, or not simple chain, simple ring. This ring will essentially disappear at the top of the shawl, but it gets us started here with what we want to um, accomplish. So row two, it says we're going to, um, or I'm sorry, row one, we're gonna chain three. So one, two, and three. And this counts as a double crochet. Now in the instructions, you'll see that you have a bunch of stitches in some brackets, and that lets us know that we're gonna put all of those stitches into this ring. So where you have that ring all nice and separated there, we're gonna put all of these stitches in that bracket into that ring. So we're gonna start off by yarning over our hook and placing a double crochet. So there's my double crochet. Then I'm gonna chain three, one, two, three, and then do two double crochets. So we'll do one and two. Now you'll notice that all of that, the chain three and the two double crochets were in some parentheses. And on the outside of that, it says three times. So we're gonna do the chain three and two double crochets three times total. So that was once, we're gonna do that two more times. So one, two, three, and then do two double crochets. So there's one and two. One, two, three, and then two double crochets. So there's one and two, All right? So what you have created here is the start of your shawl, okay? So we have not gone all the way around the ring. This is our starting point. This is our ending point. And these two points here are going to start the wingspan of our shawl, okay? Now we turn our work. So I'm gonna turn my work. I'll be looking at the wrong side and I'm on row two. Am I going too fast? I wanna make sure I'm going nice and slow for you guys. Looks like I'm good. Okay, fantastic. Here we go. So I'm gonna chain four. And remember the notes indicate that this chain four is going to count as a treble crochet. So that chain four counts as a treble. Now it says I'm gonna put one double crochet in the next double crochet. So right here into this double crochet, I will place one. Now, if you're uncertain with that, like even right now, as I read through instructions, I will read it and I'm like, okay, that's where I should put it. But then you'll notice guys on page two, there is a, a, um, a chart. So if you ever wanted to look at the chart to double check, to make sure you're putting your stitch in the correct place, that is a great thing to do. All right. So like I just scrolled down to the chart and I can see that, yes, I'm supposed to put that double crochet into that double crochet right there. Okay. Now I'm supposed to chain two. And into this chain three space, I'm gonna place three double crochets. And that's what I like to call my granny set. So I'm gonna go into that whole space right there and I'll put three double crochets. One, 
two, and three. Chain one. And now, right here, this here is going to be the center of my shawl. Okay, guys? So I'm going to put three double crochets. So one, two, and three. And I'm putting those in that next chain three space. I'm sorry, I should have said that. Now I'm not looking at the written instructions guys right now. I'm looking at my, my chart, but hopefully I'm saying the same thing that's written. I will chain one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to place three more double crochets into this same space. Once I do that, I'm gonna take a marker and I'm going to place my marker into that chain four space because it's going to be a big like sort of stop sign for me to be like, hey, just so you know, as you're crocheting along and you're super comfortable with everything, remember that when you get to this marker, that's the center of your shawl. So we're going to have to make sure we do our increase right there at the center of the shawl. So whenever we get there, we'll be working an increase. So this marker is there to help us identify that. Okay, so that's what that marker is there for. Now I, I continue on, I'm gonna keep working around here and I will chain one. In the next chain three space, I'll do another, what I'm calling a granny set, which is three double crochets. So one and two and three. And this is where some people will get confused, right? Here at the end, they're like, I don't know where I'm supposed to put my stitches. Well, you're gonna chain two and then we're gonna go ahead and we'll put a double crochet into this double crochet right there. So I'm gonna put a double crochet into the actual double crochet. And then I'm gonna put a treble crochet into the third chain of my turning chain. Now, some of you might ask, well, Marley, can I just put my treble crochet like into that space? You could, technically you could, but I will tell you, I find it much, cleaner and it looks better if you actually put the stitch into the chain, just like if you were working into a foundation chain. All right, so I'm going to work a treble crochet here. I haven't turned my work. I'm just going to hold it like this. so You can see here we're starting to get, actually I'll put it down here. We're starting to get the wingspan right here at the outside and then right here, this is the point of our shawl that will gradually become longer and longer and these will become wider and wider and that will start to give us our shawl. Everybody with me so far? Okay. All right, so here's the cool thing, y'all. As we get going, these next couple like rows, once we get past um, row four, uh, row five and six are just the repeat. So this is, this is where we're really close to getting to where you really don't have to look too much more, right? All right, so I'm gonna turn my work and I'm going to begin on row three. And I start off with the chain four. One, two, three, four. And I can see I'm going to place a double crochet into that first double crochet. Remember that's a treble and here's my double. So I'm gonna place a double right there. Okay. Now I will chain two, one and two. In the next chain two space, I'm going to do my granny set. So I'm going to do my three double crochets. So I yarn over my hook, go into the space and do my granny set. So there's one, two, and three. I chain two do one double crochet into this one chain one space. Chain two. And I'm here to my marker. So remember when I get to my marker, that's my indication. I was like, hey, I'm at my, my center. So I'm gonna be working my increase here at the center, which is a granny set, chain four, granny set. Okay, so I will do my granny set, which you guys, by the way, is not like a standard term or anything. It's just what I call the three double crochets when they're worked together in this manner. 
it just makes a lot of sense to me. Then we'll chain four. We can move our marker up, okay, because we're going to be moving that marker. I'll move it aside right now. And then we'll do three more double crochets over here or another granny set. So there's one. two, and three, okay? So there's my chain four area. Once again, I always like to mark it because you guys, you'll get home late from work or from school or for just a general day of watching the kids and you'll be so tired and you'll be in such a rhythm of just doing this sequence that you'll go right by your center increase and then you'll have to rip out your work. So just do yourself a favor. This is like, such a blessing to have a stitch marker in that center stitch just to be able to to find it really easily you're going to chain two we're back over here to our one chain one and we'll do a double crochet chain two and then over here in this chain two space over here we're going to do another granny set to get you guys through the first couple repeats of this so you can just keep going on and when you finish yours you're going to be like oh my gosh you're going to share it with us on social media and we're going to say good for you it's going to be awesome all right so i did my granny set i chained two i'm over here at the end so i'm going to do a double crochet into this double crochet And then I'm going to do a treble into the fourth chain of this turning chain. So I yarn over my hook twice and I'm going to go into the fourth chain of my turning chain. It's a little tricky and then just complete my treble crochet. Okay. Once again, you take a look. I mean, you can see it's starting to come together, right? It's like, all right, that's neat. That's cool. And I'm obviously using a solid color yarn, but maybe you were using a striped yarn or even this yarn here, it has all the long color changes. You get some really good variety happening where it looks like you've done a ton of color work when really you've just let the yarn do the same. Uh, let's see here, what is that question right there, Patricia? Do we count the fourth chain from the left or the right of the chain? So I'm not sure what you mean by that. When you're down here, it's essentially, it's the very, it's the very top chain right there next to the double crochet. So you'll work into your double crochet and the next chain over, that's the one you're going to work into. Okay. It's that, it's that top one right there. All right. I also have a question from Dana. Sure. She's saying in the first row, do you do the chain three only after the two double chains? The chain three after the two double chains. I'm not sure what that means. In row one, row one, we did chain three, which counted as a double. And then we did a double, chain three, two doubles, chain three, two doubles, chain three, two doubles. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to answer that question. Um, so, Dana, let's see, does Dana mean after the two double crochets? So, okay, so Dana, right down here, when we started with our chain three, that counts as a double. So if you figure that's two doubles that you start with and two doubles that you're gonna end with when you do this first, first row. We'll see if that's what, if that's what she is asking. All right, so that was the end of three, right? So one, two, three. So now we go on, is that correct? <coughs> Excuse me. So we're gonna go on to um, row four. Okay, good, Dina says we answered it, fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my work. Once again, I am looking at the chart. So as I'm saying these words, I'm saying them as I'm reading the chart, which should absolutely coincide with what is being written in the instruction. So if you guys, if I happen to be saying it slightly different than the way it's written, that's why, but um, this is a great opportunity for you to look at the words and the chart together and really use uh, this chart. They are so helpful. I've chained four and I'm gonna place a double crochet into this first double crochet. 
this is getting familiar, right? So, I mean, right now, even at the start, you can be like, all right, so I'm starting off pretty much every row the exact same way. So that looks really great, right? Then I chain two. And then I'm gonna place a granny set right here into this first chain two space. I'll do my granny set. Then I chain one. And in this next chain two space, I'll do another granny set. So I'm gonna do a granny set in the next space. Chain one. In the next space, I'll do another granny set. Chain one. And up oh, without even looking at my instructions, I'm like, oh, look at that. I'm right here at my center increase again. So I know what I'm supposed to do there. It's just like all the other ones. So I'll do a granny set, chain four, granny set, all into this chain four space. You guys see how that marker is just so helpful to give you a really good orientation of where you are in the shawl. So there are my three doubles and I'll chain four. And this is where my marker will end up going. I'll just go ahead and move it there now. And then, whoop, and then I'll do this here. Did you guys see that? Like I let my work kind of go and I was like, oh, all right. So you could accidentally start working back this way and be like, what happened? Always make sure your work is facing the correct way. If you have trouble with this, like I, I'm used to it, so I don't need to do anything. But usually if you have trouble with this, take a marker, just a, a different colored marker. And if you mark it on one side of your fabric, again, this will be a visual cue for you to be like, okay, so if you, if you were working on this like I was, and then you kind of dropped it and you picked it up, if you didn't see your marker, you'd be like, oh, I'm not on the right side. Like I need to be on this side. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Markers are your friend. And yes, I can do things without markers, everybody. I just really like them because I like to make my life as easy as possible. Because I mean, can I get an amen that sometimes life can really just come at you? So I don't want, I don't want my knitting and crochet to do that for me. All right, so once I have done, <laughs> thank you, Patricia. Once I have done my center, I do my chain one and I'm essentially mimicking what I just did over here or mirror imaging what I did here where I'll do a granny set, chain one, a granny set, chain one and a granny set. And then I'm right here at the end again. So I will go ahead and do my granny set. This is already starting to become very familiar, right? Once you get past these setup rows, like this is really what is setting up our pattern. And then we can get to rows five and six. And that's what we just keep repeating. It's really easy. I chained one, I do another granny set. I'm over here, this would be a chain two space. So I do another granny set. All right, let's see. I finish off here with a chain two. I'll put a double crochet right here. And then I'm gonna finish with my treble. So I yarn over my hook twice and make sure I go into my chain. And once again, Dana, it's right. I think it's Dana that was asking. I could be wrong. Um, there's where I put my double. So I'm putting it into this chain right there. So sometimes I'll take my hook and I will grab at the chain just like this and pull up. It makes it easy to get in there if you're having some trouble at all. Looks pretty good, right? All right, so that was my, my row four. All right, so I can turn my work and go on to my row five. Ooh, 
I want to make sure everybody is good. So I'm looking over here. Everybody doing all right? Yep. Oh, looking good, LJ. Looking good, Janetta. Dana, that looks awesome. Good, Sandra. That's fantastic. All right. I love it. I love it. All right. Here we go. I have oh, a I question. See Tina here. <laughs> Tina's here. She made the 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 bunny rabbit from the last time we were here. Um, yes, go ahead, Patricia. Oh, okay. When you go into the fourth chain of the turning chain, are you catching two legs? I am. Yep. So I tend to catch two legs because I think it looks better. Um, so yes, I absolutely am catching two legs. And another question. If I wanted to change between solid colors, where and how would you suggest I do it? Oh, that's a very good question. You know what? I would do it right here. So I will do it right here for you. So let's pretend that I wanted to do a stripe. I wanted to do a new color. What I could do is I'm going to pull out just the last pull through I did on my treble crochet here. So I'm getting back to where I have two legs on my hook on that last treble. And what I could do is I would drop the color I'm on. Yes, legs are the same as V. And I would grab whatever new color I want to use, make sure I leave a tail and then grab the new color and I will yarn over with my new color and pull it through those two loops to finish off that treble. So now my treble still has my brown, but I have this, the Mai Tai color on my hook. So my Mai Tai color is ready to go for my next row, but I didn't interrupt my brown color down here. So that's how you would change colors. And I would turn my work and I would just get started. Now I have a choice here. I can cut my brown and then um, rejoin it later. Or if I want to, maybe I go down and back with the Mai Tai. I could carry up the brown the next time I want to use it. But when I do that, it's going to leave a little bit of a float, which might not bother you, especially if you decide to do like a row of single crochets along the top or something, you could just hide your float. But that's an option you have. So I'm going to just, I'll carry on with this color, which is perfect because I planned on doing that anyways, to show you that this is the repeat. So this is what the whole pattern is, is right here with this repeat. Okay. So can you guys all see that color pretty all right? I was hoping you can. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Susan. Okay, guys. So this is row five. We're going to start off with the chain four. One, two, three, four. Here is a suggestion. If you have a hard time finding where that chain is when it when you come back to work into it, guess what I'm going to suggest? <laughs> Take your marker after you do your chain four, place your marker into that chain behind the loop on your hook. And that marker lets you know that, hey, that's where you're gonna put your last stitch of the row. All right, so if you have trouble finding that chain, now you've marked it, you shouldn't have any problem when it's time to come back to it. All right, so there we go. We have our chain four. Now we go ahead and we're gonna do a double crochet into this double crochet there, just like we have been all along. All right. Now I'm going to chain two into this first chain two space. I will do my granny set. So one, two, and three. Now I will chain two and do one double crochet into this chain space. Go to Uncle Mimi says Tom. Chain two. Okay. One double crochet into the next chain space. Chain two. My yarn's creeping up on me one double crochet into the next chain space. Chain two. And oh, I'm here to the center. So I know I'm going to work my increase. So I work my increase with my double crochet granny set. So there are three. Then I chain four. And I do my other granny set all into the same chain four space. When it's done, I can move my marker up once again to 
Make sure I know where that center is. Makes it really easy to identify it. I'm gonna move it right there. And then we're gonna pause here for just a second, okay? One thing that you have probably noticed, you're like, well, wow, we only did a granny set right here at the start and then right here in the center. Everything else, we just did these chain twos and then this double, chain two and double, chain two, double. Remember when I showed you the sample that I mentioned that it looks like it's these granny sets with these sort of fillet areas? That's what we're creating. So the sort of fillet area where it's the double chain two, double chain two, double, that's, that would be the row five. That's your row five repeat. Your row six repeat is going to be doing those granny sets in, in those chain spaces. But you'll notice here on the edge of the sample piece, it's always started off with either the treble or the chain fours. And then it's always that double into that first double. And then it's always a granny set into that first chain two. You see that like the whole way that we're always starting or ending just like that. The difference here is that on row five or row six is that it's either the fillet or it's the granny stitch. So once we decipher which row we're on, you're gonna, it's pretty easy to get going along. And the cool thing is with the fillet section, you are doing a double chain two double and when you do the granny stitches up here, it's grant granny stitch, the granny set, the granny set, and then it's only a chain one and then granny set and then a chain one. So yes, the granny sets, they're like bookends. You have one here and then this nice, the, the treble and the double out here on the edge just make a really nice clean edge. Okay, so there's not any need for a, a trim along here. So when I was talking earlier about this here and if you wanted to carry up the yarn, if you wanted to add a trim along there to hide your, your floats, you could. You don't have to though. This, this pattern is made very easy in that there's not a lot of finishing. It's just that when you get down here to the end, you just have this very simple finishing here. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this. So I went around the corner and what I find, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I do shawls like this, I always feel like, all right, so you get down one side and then it makes my brain really happy to just mimic the same thing over there. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Now I'm just doing it essentially what I just did backwards, right? So I wanna make sure I chain two, do my double into this chain space, chain two, double into this chain space, so on and so forth. Get all the way to the end, chain two, and then this is my chain two space. This would be my granny set. Somebody mentioned it's like a bookends. Absolutely. So that's my granny set. And then I chain two, do a double into this last double, and then do a treble into the fourth chain of your turning chain. Okay, I'm gonna set this down. You can see here, technically this is the right side because remember row one was considered a right side and so that's the right side. But that's what we have so far. Now, do you have to only use two colors if you wanted to change colors? No, and you know what guys? <laughs> you could use two different colorways of this yarn and switch them up like every two rows if you wanted to also. Like it doesn't just have to be solid colors. Like you could really make something fun. Um, but no, you could do three colors. Like if I wanted to do a third color here, um, I could do my third color coming back and then I would have my brown down here waiting for me to use. And then I would use my brown coming back and I'd have my Mai Tai here waiting for me to use. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna show you how that would be. Plus that helps you identify the two different rows. So I want you to be able to tell. So I, again, I'm just undoing that last, the last pull through I did on my, um, on my treble and let's grab pink. Can you guys see the pink against the, the Mai Tai there? Does it show up well enough? Kind of, not really. Somebody says not really. How about yellow? Yellow, much better? Okay. Thank you, Susan. All right, 
So I'm grabbing my yellow yarn over, pull through. So again, by changing colors that way, I haven't let my yellow bleed through to the color below, but I have the yellow on my hook and I'm ready. So I can turn my work and chain four or chain four and turn my work. It really doesn't matter, you guys. Um, there we go, turn. Notice I'm leaving all of my yarn attached because I plan on using it again to show you how you could float it. And as I mentioned, you could do this, you could change two different colors of the, um, the yarn the pattern calls for also. So even without looking at my pattern, I know, because we just talked about this, that I'm gonna start off with a double into that double. I also know I'm gonna start off with a chain two. And I also know I'm gonna start off with the granny set right here into this chain two. So I start off with all of that here to begin with. And I know I will end with all that also. Okay, so looking at what I have here, I can see, oh, look, that was my, my row five, my filet sort of row. So on this row six, as I'm working across, wherever I see these spaces, I'm gonna be doing my granny sets. And if I'm working granny sets, I only will chain one between each one. So I know that this one will be a chain one and I'll do a granny set over here. And I'll do this all the way over to my marked center. So even without looking at the pattern anymore, this is how you're gonna memorize it and it's gonna become very easy for you. You just, you just kind of, you read your crochet, read what it's telling you to do. It's a very easy two row repeat. You just think to yourself, all right, it's just some a double crochets and then you just separate them out with some chains. Make sure you increase on the outsides and in the center using those awesome stitches. And you just keep going. You make it as big as you want. For sure. And I do wanna remind you like the cotton ripple cakes, it is a cotton yarn. So if you get it wet and stretch it out and um, block it, I mean, you can block it really nice and big for sure. All right, so here we are. Make sure you don't forget that chain one before you go on to your corner. And then we're at our corner. So we know how to do this corner. So we're gonna do our granny set. Oops. Chain four. Sorry, my yarn keeps creeping up on me, guys. To get it, <laughs> get a nice length here. And then do my other granny set over here. All right, move my marker up. Maybe. I know that you can get these markers at Michael's or you could make your own markers if you wanted to. I have instructions how to do that on my own YouTube channel. So if you're a crafty person like me, get yourself some beads and stuff from Michael's <laughs> and make yourself some stitch markers. All right, so I've chained one and I'm gonna make my way back. So I'll do my granny sets all the way back to the end where I'll do that special ending, just like I did the beginning and then I carry on. Let's get down here. And I think I mentioned this earlier, but the gauge on this particular pattern is not like super important, unless you're just, you know, unless you're one of those rare unicorns who only buys as much yarn as you possibly need. And you, you want to make sure you're only using that amount because that's totally not me. Like I'm always buying, if it says I need four, I'll buy five. <laughs> like I, I never just have just that amount of amount of yarn. All right, so I'm down here at the end. So I just did a um, the tr three set there. So I'll, ch uh, geez, I can't talk, chain one. So I come over here, this is my chain two space. So I'm gonna do my granny set here. All right, don't forget after that one, it's a chain two. Then you do a double into this double. And then 
And this is where, this is how you would use that stitch marker that we put there. We know that that stitch marker indicates where we're supposed to create our treble. So I just put my, my stitch right into that chain and I know that's where I create my treble. Now I'm gonna pause right there. Notice I didn't complete my last draw through. And the reason is, I'm gonna show you, down here, let's say it's time to change colors again and I wanna go back to my brown. Well, if I forgot what color I'm supposed to go next, what I can do is be like, okay, what color is down here waiting for me? I'm like, all right, is it that color? Nope, that's the tail. So I know that color is not waiting for me. So I tuck that tail aside and I'm like, okay, so here's the brown. Is this brown waiting for me? Yep, it's all the way attached over here. So this brown is waiting for me to use. So I've worked my treble up to where I have two loops left on my hook. I bring the brown up so that it's, it's the same length as the distance I'm bringing it. I don't wanna bring it up like this and make it pucker, right? You don't wanna do that. So you would bring it up, make sure it's the same distance, yarn over and pull through. Now, yes, this is going to leave a float. And if you tend, if you not tend, if you decide to do this with whatever yarn you're using, I highly recommend finishing off like this edge of your shawl with maybe a row of single crochets to hide those floats. Um, but I will leave that totally up to you. But this is, this is how you could change colors. So now I have the brown back on my hook and I would carry on. Now you might be like, well, what, what do I do next? Because that's the end of the instructions. It just says the sixth row. Well, now we're going to repeat row five. So I go back to row five. So I've chained four, turn my work. And without even looking at the pattern, you guys, like let's, let's read our crochet. We know we started with our, our chain four. We know we're going to put a double right there. We know we're going to chain two and we know we're going to put a, a double crochet granny set right here. Okay. Then we have to decide what's the next course of action. Well, we know that our pattern itself is going to go from either a row of doubles and chain twos or granny sets and chains once. If this previous row was a granny set and a chain one, we know this next one is gonna be a chain two and, and a, a double crochet, a chain two and a double crochet all the way along. It's the fillet section, right? We still know we're gonna work our increase over here and then we'll do the opposite this way. So without even looking at the pattern, I can be like, all right, I know exactly where I am. So I'm not gonna look at the pattern. You guys, you guys test me here, okay? I'm going to start off with my double into my double. Don't forget if you wanted to mark, if you wanted to mark your, um, your fourth chain, you would do it right now. If that's what you wanted to do. Oh, I can't get it to go, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. All right. So then I know I do a chain two because that's always what comes after that double. And I also know I'm going to do a granny set right here into this chain two space. So I start with that. Okay, now I know that I'm going into the fillet section. And when I do that, I also know that each of those are separated by two chains. So I chain two, go to the next chain space and do a double. Chain two, go to the next chain space and do a double. Chain two, go to the next chain space and do a double. Chain two, go to the next chain space, do a double. Chain two, go to the next chain space, do a double. Chain two, go to the next chain space. Ah, it's my corner or my, my center. You see how helpful that is? So I know I'm going to be going to do my granny set. chain four and another granny set all into that chain four space. I usually will pause and move my marker up at this point. Gives me kind of a, a, a little 
respite also, especially as the sides start to get really long. And now I'm gonna work up the other way. So I chain two, do a double into the chain one space, chain two, do a double, 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 chain two. Oh, I'm to my chain two space. So this is where I do my granny set. I chain two. I do my double into my double. And I do my treble into the fourth chain of my turning chain. And if I'm changing colors, I will change colors on my last pull through. So right here, I would drop my brown. I'm looking for the color that's waiting for me. Is it the yellow? Nope, the yellow, that's the tail. So I know that it's the Mai Tai. So I pick it up, bring it up, make sure that the float is the same length as the distance you're floating it up. You know what I mean? You don't want it to pinch too much. And then you carry on. So it would be chain four and turn or turn and chain four, either one. Turn your work. And we're ready to go to the next. So then if we weren't looking at our pattern, we'd be like, all right, what row am I on? I just finished the fillets, which means I'm ready to go back to my grannies. Perfect. Let's do that. So I'll do a double right here into this double. Chain two. Do a granny set into the chain two. Right? Now I'm like, okay, I'm doing granny sets all along. So I do a chain one, granny set into the next chain two space. So on and so forth. Now, do I like all these cords or cords, yarn and stuff hanging out. No, it, it bothers me, but this is how you could do it. I, I wanted to show you that it is possible. This is also a great thing if like you have scrap yarn laying around, like maybe you've made another project and you want to combine the same type of yarn, but different colors. This is how you could do it. Pretty easy stuff. But that's the beauty of the Karen, um, the Karen cotton cakes or um, these one here, the cotton ripple cakes. All the color work is done for you. So you don't have to sit here with all these colors like this, you know, it's all done for you, which is a beautiful thing. Now, as you're working on your project, I've mentioned to you that you can make it as long as you want. The biggest thing you're gonna want to do though, is you wanna make sure that you end with a, um, a, a uh, gosh, I can't think, um, a row five. And the reason I'm having you end with a row five is because the, the chart itself shows the next row being done on, on top of a row five, which would be a, um, would make the first row of your edging done on a wrong side. And then the second row of your edging would be done on the right side. So you want to make sure you would end with a row five. Okay. So you guys are, are getting this process, right? Like this is starting to make sense. Yeah. All right, because what I want to do now is I'm actually going to rip out what I was just working on here since this previous row was a row five and I'm going to show you how you would do the edging. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to rip out what I just did right there because I feel like, I mean, by this point, you should feel like it's pretty, you're pretty uh, comfortable, hopefully. And if not, just rewatch the video. I need that one in there. Okay. Let me take this out. And I will go ahead and keep the color change just so you can easily see what my uh, stitches are that I'm getting ready to do. But really guys, it's just single crochets. Uh, so it's, it's pretty darn easy, which is fantastic. All right, so this is where I would have ended my row five and it'd be like, all right, so that's long enough. I'm ready to do my edging. So all you would do here is you would chain one and you quite literally will put a single crochet 
into all of the stitches and all of the chains. Now, does that mean you have to go into the chains? No, you could go into the chain space. So I just put one single crochet, one single crochet. There are two chains there. So I'm gonna put two single crochets and I'm not gonna go into the actual chains. I'm gonna put them into the space because you guys, I mean, that have been around with me a while, you know, I don't need the brain damage. So I like to go into the space, except on the edges. But right here, I'm just doing single crochets really into all of the spaces and all of the stitches. And if there are two chains, which there are, there are two chains, so I put two singles in and then I put one into the stitch. And I would do this all the way to the, um, the center. So let's get over there and then I'm gonna look at the chart and read what we do on the center. Um, all right. Patricia, how's everybody doing? Are there any other questions right now? Everyone looks really busy crocheting. Awesome. You know what? It's because it's addictive. You, you're just like, oh, I get this. And there's something very soothing about the repetitive nature of stitches that you're very comfortable with. And they are very soothing and it's just, it's nice. All right. So I'm here where I've, I've gone into all of my stitches. And so this is my, my chain four section here. And if I'm looking at the chart, I can see that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven single crochets into this. So essentially it's one single crochet for each one of those. And then it's like three in the center. So I'm gonna confirm that by looking at the words. Yep, seven single crochets in the center. See how great that is? All right, so all right here in the center section, I'm gonna put seven single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you just carry on making sure you get a single crochet into each one of the stitches all the way up. So I'm gonna keep going here. And this is one of those things if, if you guys are watching and you've already started your shawl, just remember that you can always come back when you're ready for this portion and rewatch the video, okay? It's, it's pretty darn easy. This is one of those little edgings that I love because it doesn't matter how many stitches I have. I know that I just do a simple edging like this and I can do it on any stitch count I want. And that's just, that makes, that makes my brain very happy because I hate when I have to count stitches for an edging because inevitably I always will have one too many or one too few and then I'm fudging it. I mean, I know you guys can relate to that. I mean, for real, the struggle is real. <laughs> All right, so I'm coming over here. I have two single crochets. I'll put one right here. And then I'm gonna put one into the top of my turning chain. And I've reached the end of what would be my row one of my edging. And this is the wrong side of my fabric, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and cut my brown because I'm not gonna use it. So I would cut it and get rid of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and carry on with my yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my Mai Tai so that it's out of the way. And if I wanted to carry on with my yellow, let's just, because I can, I would want to make sure I pull it through on that last pull through here, if I'm doing it the same way as all the others. So I would pull up my yellow from below. Make sure it doesn't pucker there and then I can turn my work and leave in on your ends later. All right, so this would be the, the second and the final row of your edging. So you would chain one, single crochet into this first single crochet. And then you cr create a pico, which is really quite easy. You chain three, so one, two, three, and then you're going to slip stitch into that first chain you created. So you go into it, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull that loop through. Okay? 
Now we're going to single crochet in each of the next three single crochets. So one, two, three. And then we do a pico. One, two, three. Come back to the first chain you did and work a slip stitch. And then do three single crochet. So you are still single crocheting in each one of the singles you just did. However, between the three single crochets, you're working a pico, which is a very fun stitch to do. It's a great place that if you wanted to add a bead to your work, you could do that. You could get like all super fancy, y'all. Um, pretty, pretty fun to do. It's a great little edging just to add to your crocheters toolbox, you guys, the pico and the single crochets. It's just a lot of fun. But as you go, you can see here, get this beautiful little stitch. You see that? And you just keep it going all the way around. And even down here in the increase area, you aren't going to do anything extra. Your pico will end up right down here. Um, I don't know, that's, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna keep going and I'll ask Patricia if there are any questions at all. Um, I mean, if you guys wanted to make a flower, you can make a flower and add it to your, you could add it to your shawl, right? You could any sort of flower you want. Like there's all sorts of little things you could do. Um, you could make yourself a, a beaded shawl pin. Um, I know that Michael's has tons of really great beads and, and stuff you could do there. Um, can you tell I like beads? I'm really into beads lately. More bling, the better. Um, <laughs> but the Pico guys, um, and I'm doing a three stitch Pico, a three chain Pico. If you wanted to do a five, you could do a five. If you wanted to be more fringe like, you could do more fringe. Um, I mean, really the sky's the limit with what you want to do. Really good stuff. Well, yeah. everyone's loving the flower. Oh yeah. <laughs> so um, <laughs> and the that Pico. flower, it was, it's a posy designed by my friend Robin Chichula. I taught a class on it the other day. It's a really wonderful flower. It's a lot of fun to make. Um, yeah, we could do that sometime too. <laughs> like, uh, my plan is to add that to my, my YouTube channel. So check out Marley bird YouTube channel. <laughs> and you'll see that very soon, but yeah, there's lots of, lots of fun stuff you can do. I mean, and use fun colors, do whatever you want. I mean, you could do whatever floats your boat. This is a really great, easy, I want to call it generic because it is a pretty, and, I'm, and when I say generic, I mean the stitches. They're pretty just plain generic crochet stitches, but they're used in such a way that makes them absolutely fabulous. Um, coupled with the yarn where you don't have to do all the color work with all these ends. I mean, gosh, I know you guys are gonna make this. And when you do, make sure you share with us on social media, please. I mean, please share with me for sure. Um, hashtag Marley Bird and I will find it. Um, but you can use hashtag, hashtag make it with Michaels hashtag your inspirations. Um, we love seeing your work. Like it's just so much fun. And honestly, for me as a teacher, guys, it's super gratifying to see that you are actually like putting into action things that you're learning here in class. It's just wonderful. Um, how many of you are thinking to yourself, all right, I got to make this either for yourself or for a loved one, because it's a lot of fun. This is one of those pieces that you could start it tonight and have it done, you know, by Saturday, if that's what you want. So I'm going to go back to my face, if that's all right, Felicia. Um, so yeah, that's it, guys. This is a beautiful, beautiful little piece. You can do anything you want with it. Uh, this pattern, once again, it's free over at Yarnspirations. It's Rainy Day Crochet Shawl. I know they put the link in the chat. I know that if you're watching this on the replay, the link is most likely in the video description box. Make sure you check it out. Um, my name is Marley Bird. Um, you can check me out uh, on my YouTube channel or on my, my website. And then we're using Yarnspirations Yarn, the Karen Cotton Ripple Cakes, which is exclusive to Michael's. So you can only pick this up at Michael's. This is the color Summer Rain. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, I love this so much. Uh, I love it when they come out with all the cotton cake yarn because it just feels so good. Um, super excited about it. But I hope you like this. Um, these shawls are absolutely fantastic just to throw on. And some of you might be like, I'm not a shawl person. Like you don't have to wear a shawl where it's just, you know, like over your shoulders like this. You can bunch it up 
And if you do it more like asymmetrical, like this, where the, the point is off to the side and point this back. And then if you do like a shawl pin or something right here, um, it's just enough that it just, it just feels really good. I don't know. I think it does. It feels great. It's just enough warmth. It feels really good. It has wonderful drape. Um, and it's fun to make. How many of you are going to make it? Give me a thumbs up. Ooh, quite a few of you, a lot of you, a lot of you. That is so fun. All right, then I'm going to be looking for you online for absolutely sure. All right, so that's it for me, everybody. Patricia, I'm going to hand it back to you. And thanks, guys. Well, I just want to say thanks for joining us and we hope you had fun. We look forward to seeing you next time. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on mycos.com and the recording of today's class will be available at mycos.com slash classes. Perfect. And that's it. <laughs> Bye.